Friends, welcome again to the Grace Baptist Church. This is our midweek broadcast, and uh, we appreciate you tuning in to the Wednesday evening service. Going to be right back here in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 12, and we're going to be starting here at verse number 10. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come tonight thanking you for another day you give us. Pray that you'll just bless each one listening. Take the message applied into our hearts that we may learn this wisdom found in this precious book called the Bible, for it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, we've been looking at a passage in Proverbs that, of course, Solomon is the writer, and he gave some wonderful advice to his son, and of course, to us. 2,000 years later, we're still, actually about 3,000 years later, we're still reading it. And uh, before we get into the passage, I heard a funny story this week, and I always kind of like to share some humor. I think that's what we need a little more of a sense of humor in this day we're living in. But anyway, there was a man that lived all alone out in Idaho. Of course, that's where they plant a lot of potatoes. And he was a potato farmer. And he got ready to spade out his potato garden, but it was so hard and he was getting on up in the years. And his only son, Bubba, who used to help him plant the garden, was in prison. So the old man wrote a letter to his son, described his predicament. <laughs> and he said, dear Bubba, I'm feeling pretty bad because it looks like I won't be able to plant my potato garden this year. I'm just getting too old to dig up a garden plot. If you were here, all my troubles would be over, and I know you'd dig the plot for me. So Bubba wrote back a couple of days later and said, dear dad, I love you very much. And he said, but for heaven's sake, don't dig up in that garden. That's where I buried all the bodies. Love, Bubba. <laughs> well, at 4 a.m. the next morning, the FBI and the local police showed up, dug up the entire area there without finding any bodies, and they apologized to the old man, left him alone, let him go back to sleep. And Another day or two later, Bubba <laughs> sent him another letter and uh, told his daddy, he said, Daddy, he said, I'm so sorry. He said, but under the circumstances, you can go ahead and plant your potatoes now. That was the best I could do. <laughs> well, anyway, I want to pick up our reading tonight as we look at verse number 10 and Proverbs chapter number 12. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Now we're looking at this wisdom that God gives us from Solomon to his son Rehoboam, but also he gives it to us 3,000 years later. These are principles, and it's amazing how relevant and applicable they are in the year 2021. And we see these insights every day in our everyday life. We have to come to the conclusion that God is the writer because his word is never outdated. He knows human instinct. He knows human habits. And God is trying to help us avoid the pitfalls of life that we encounter. And so that in mind, I want to pick it up, as I said in verse 10, he's talking about here the righteous man. Now, we've talked about the righteous man, and of course, we've talked about the wicked man, and he compares the two throughout the book of Proverbs. Of course, his main conclusion is fear God all the days of your life, uh, follow in the footsteps of our Lord, and you'll have a blessed life. So we see here he's talking about this righteous man. And he says, the righteous man looks after his pets, looks after his beast. Uh, maybe in that day, they had a, you know, a, an ox to help in the garden. Uh, maybe they had a donkey or a cow, could have had a little uh, a dog or a cat. We don't know. I know in our day, mostly our pets are a little bit different probably than what they had back in the biblical days. But he's, he's saying a, a real righteous man is going to be one who loves his animals and the tender mercies of the wicked though are cruel a, a wicked man's gonna you know hurt animals that's basically talking about the condition of the heart as much as it is the animals and it's amazing verse for pet owners i mean the godly person takes good care of the animals and uh, the best the wicked can do is still cruelty he says cruel to animals uh, I've seen people be so cruel and mean to animals, and I just wondered why in the world did you ever get that animal to start with? I mean, if you can't take care of it 
<laughs> I don't think it's a good thing to take one and abuse it. And so he's actually talking about a heart problem. He's saying their wickedness shows up in the way that a person even takes care of their, their pet. And uh, as well as their family, those around them, their friends, if they have any friends, and if they abuse them, ignore them, they ignore their need for shelter and food and water, it just shows the wickedness of the heart. But a person who loves that animal, who loves that pet, going to try to take care of that pet, going to look after it. And uh, somebody asked me one time, are there going to be any animals in heaven? And I believe there's going to be some in heaven. That's just my thought. I know there's going to be some horses up there because Revelation 19 says we're going to be coming back on a white horse when Jesus comes back and we're going to be riding with him. And so I know if there's horses in heaven, maybe there's going to be some dogs and cats and fish. There's a river of life. And what good is a river without any fish in it? But anyway, the point of the passage here is the way a person treats his or her pets, that's a good indication of the condition of the heart of a person. You watch and see how good that person is to their pet. Then he goes on in verse 11. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons, he's void of understanding. I mean, the hard worker is going to have plenty of food, he says. All of his needs are going to be met, but that person who's always chasing fantasies and moving with the worthless, they don't really understand how destructive that lifestyle is. They're wasting their life away on endless pursuits that are not going to give them anything. So wise people work hard. Foolish people waste their time. I mean, we only have 168 hours a week, and only the Lord knows how many we have left. So we ought to take advantage and try to use whatever we have for his honor and for his glory and take care of those around us, even as far as our pets. Verse 12, the wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. What's he talking about here, my friend? Well, basically, the evil man's always looking to steal from another person. Uh, they're always looking to get something that's not theirs. They didn't work for it. They didn't earn it, but they want it for free. They want to steal something. They're never satisfied. And so their constructions, they eventually are going to fall to the ground and their plots are going to eventually be destroyed. You can't build a life on stealing and lying and cruelty and wickedness. It just shortens life. And there's no joy in that. You don't really see much joy until you know the Lord, because it's him who gives us that joy. He gives us a peace that passes understanding. He gives us a joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We see it in verse 13. The wicked, he snared by the transgression of his lips. Be very careful what we say. The wicked person can't control what he says. He's uh, tempted to say something, and boy, he's called every time in temptation. Says the wrong thing. But the just shall come out of trouble. The evil person's always speaking before he thinks. <laughs> I've done that. You've probably done that. Not saying that anybody we're talking to here is evil, but I just know our nature. Uh, the human nature has an evil side to it, and it's called the flesh. And that old fleshly nature can rear its ugly head up if we're not allowing the Lord to control us, and we say before we think, we get in trouble before we ever realize what's happened. Has that ever happened to you? You spoke before you ever thought. <laughs> this person may get trapped by using gossip. I mean, saying lies and talking bad about other people. Profanity, falsehood. Be careful, friends, what you say. A wise person stays out of a lot of trouble because they refrain their words. I'd say some of the wisest people I know say the fewest of words. I mean, they don't talk a whole lot, but what they do say means an awful lot. Uh, so we have to be very careful, he says here. Don't be snared by that trick 
of using bad language. <laughs> a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth in verse 14, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. You can bring much good and blessing into your life by just speaking words of wisdom and insight and encouragement. It not only helps others, it helps yourself. And the reward of hard work is especially significant, he's saying here. The recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. What we sow, we reap. If we do bad things, we get bad in return. If we do good things, guess what's going to come back? good things are going to come back our way. So we can be a blessing. We can be a help just by what we say. Our words can make or break a person's day. And so that's why he's saying there, a man shall be satisfied with the good by the fruit of his mouth. Then verse number 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You cannot instruct a foolish person. They think they know everything. You ever met anybody like that? And uh, that person cannot take advice. <laughs> that person can't learn from another wiser person. It's hard to grow if we're not really willing to take advice. Uh, if we're going to keep growing in the Lord. We need to learn something from everybody because everybody knows something that we don't know. Uh, so we need to be very careful and never think that we've arrived. Uh, I think when we, when we, Stop moving forward, we're going to start going backwards. Keep striving to grow in the Lord. Keep striving to understand the ways of the Lord and what God has for you in life. And you'll never regret that for sure. So we see here in verse number 15, he's talking about that foolish person, always right in their own eyes, never admit to being wrong. You can't convince them. But a person who will hearken unto counsel a person who can talk to you and learn from you, that's a very wise person. I mean, I've learned a whole lot by talking to people a whole lot wiser than me. And I love to listen and learn and ask questions. So the self-delusional person is notoriously foolish, he says. Too rare is the one who seeks advice when he needs it. To seek help is an admission. Hey, we, we've got a need here something the foolish person will never ask for because they have an inflated sense of their self and their self-worth. They think they know it all. They don't ask for advice. Remember what the Bible said? There is safety in a multitude of counselors. If you have some godly people around you and you can talk to them and get counsel from them, boy, they're, they're very, very precious to you. Always be thankful for that. And then we see here that verse 16 says, a fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. In other words, a foolish person has a bad temper and it kind of explodes like a volcano. I mean, they blow right up in front of everyone and never think twice about it. And their wrath is presently known by everybody around them. But a wise person knows how to stay calm, stay calm when insulted or even embarrassed, and they know how to control their emotions. They know how to control their reactions. The best thing that we can do if we're really mad is stay silent. Go into another room. <laughs> Mama used to say, son, you need to go somewhere and count to 10. Then she'd say, no, you better count to 100. <laughs> Had a bad temper, and sometimes I still do. And I'm sure there's a lot of people can identify with that. He told me it's because of my red hair. It's not much red anymore. But anyway. Bad temper can get you in a lot of trouble. Thank God he's really helped me with that. And I've not arrived. I still need his help every day. And I know we all do. So a prudent man knows how to cover up the shame. That person can just stay silent. That person can not make a big deal out of it. They can just throw the water right on the fire. And everybody goes about their own business. Then verse 17, he that speaketh the truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. In other words, the honest person speaks words of truth, while the wicked person, they lie, they deceive, kind of like a smoke screen. You ever seen anybody throw a smoke screen up? They're a false witness. They're very deceitful. 
They don't want you to know the truth. They're trying to trap you and use you for what they can get. And then verse 18, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. He's saying there, friend, some people can just about devastate you and destroy you by the words that they say. They pierce your heart. They hurt. But then there's some others who can build you up. Just their words seem like they're healing balm. And they employ good words. They have a soothing effect upon you. Why? Because they're encouraging you. They're lifting you up in prayer. They have your best interest at heart. And then verse number 19, and I think I'll stop it right there. We'll pick it up again next week, but notice what it said. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. In other words, the truth will set you free, and the truth is going to last throughout all eternity. Now, if it's a lie, it's going to fall under its own weight. It'll never hold up. But if it's the truth, you mark it down. It'll last. The truth will come out. The truth always stands for all eternity. But lies vanish. Why? Because there's no support in the lie. Thank God for the truth of the word of God. The word of God sets us free and free indeed. Do you remember the story of the old man with the old bird dog? He couldn't find any birds anymore, but he would point into every bush along the way. And the old man would automatically fire a gun up in the air saying that he had had too many good times with that dog and he wasn't about to call him a liar at this point of the game. <laughs> well, that's what you call loving your dog, loving your little bird dog. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the time we've had to come together and share another portion of your word. Bless each one listening, Lord, by the means of internet. I pray a special prayer for those who have a heavy burden tonight. I pray that God, you would touch and heal them and strengthen them. Lord, if there be one that needs to come to Christ, let them put their faith and trust in our wonderful Savior. Lord, help us to build others up by the words that we say. Let us be laborers in your vineyard and work hard for you, Lord. And we'll thank you and praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to the Grace Baptist Church. Hope you have a wonderful week. Come and see us Sunday at 10 o'clock. We have a service there at the church. We love to have you. God bless you.